Hi, I'm Steve Doherty, Editor-in-Chief of American Artist Magazine. I'm at one of my favorite painting locations along the Hudson River, Sanasqua Park. It's just down below where I live. Um, there are a number of places along the Hudson that I go to over and over again, and it, the choice usually depends on the atmospheric conditions, the um, density, the distance that one can see. Uh, today has uh, is an overcast day. I can't see a great distance, so instead of going further down the Hudson, where I have a long view from a place called Rockwood Hall, I've come to Sanasqua Park because the, sh uh, the shapes are relatively simple. Uh, they're close enough that they have definition, even with all of the a kind of misty atmosphere. Um, and it's also a place that's very um, representative of Croton on Hudson, where I live, and, and so I have a real kind of interest in this. The, the um, peninsula that sticks out right here is Croton Point. It actually is where the Croton River meets the Hudson River, um, and uh, it has historic significance, but it's of particular interest to me because of the variety of shapes and the distance. So I've blocked in um, the overall composition thinking mostly about kind of enlarging the shapes, um, because when you stand at a landscape like this, uh, things are at a distance, and to present them literally would mean that you've got some relatively small shapes on a canvas, and it doesn't really come across very well. So I've en enlarged them. I've put them into a square format. Um, I like this uh, because I uh, watched my friend uh, William Hook paint, and he does a lot of square format paintings, and they work very well compositionally, I think. Anyway, so I've blocked this in, and the, the two main things that I'm thinking about um, are the balance of warm and cool colors. I want the sky area and the water to be predominantly warm, whereas I want the distant uh, hillside and uh, Croton Point to be um, relatively cool in color. I also want to be careful about where the center of interest is, which is going to be here. Um, and then how the other shapes kind of move from there and around this square format picture. Um, I've also made an effort to warm up the background in this area. Um, again, to kind of balance off the composition, I want to be able to show a warm light coming through in this area of the sky and then reflect it in the, back, in the bottom, which will help uh, help kind of create a secondary level of interest in the composition and um, work sort of to establish some diagonal motion in what is essentially a horizontal composition. Um, I've probably got the divisions a little cl too close to the center, but if I can um, shift, you know, the balance from the dark uh, water in, the, uh, in front of me with the light sky, That'll help kind of throw off that kind of symmetry. So I'm going to get started. Oh, by the way, I've mixed um, two kinds of alkyd medium with the oil paint, um, uh, galkid gel medium and uh, galkid liquid. The advantage of mixing in an alkyd medium with the oil colors is that they dry very quickly. And that helps build up the colors uh, without the surface getting so slick that I, I lose control of it. So I, quite often I'll use an alkyd white or an alkyd medium with the oil colors when I'm on location to speed up the drying time and give me a tacky surface to work on. So as you can see, I've already started working on the sky area. Um, I'm trying to define the edge of the distant mountains. I really want those to be beautiful shapes that work well with the kind of rhythm of the two horizontal bands. Um, and I want there to be a warm color along that e top edge of the uh, distant mountains. Um, I'm trying to push the sky color and the reflected water color in a warm direction so that I can uh, push the color of the uh, land formations towards um, something cool. Um, it's not, you know, exactly, uh, you know, an equal division. But I'm, I want there to be that kind of tendency in order to distinguish the light from the, um, the land formations. So now I'm using um, mostly a phthalo 
blue, or Prussian blue actually, a Prussian blue for the cool areas in the sky, um, warming it up a little bit with um, transparent red oxide and cadmium red medium. Then um, I'm using a kind of an impressionist brush, brush stroke to uh, blend the colors together. At first I started to smooth them out, thinking I wanted more of a glass-like surface. But I like the way the colors blend when you use this sort of, um, you know, slapdash kind of quick action brush work that is typical of a kind of an impressionist uh, painting technique. So I'm continuing to work the surface, um, just sort of layering the paint, building up the texture. Um, pushing the colors a little bit, doing a little bit of detailing at the uh, edges of the trees. Um, and I'm just going to continue in that direction um, to refine this. So as I go further along with it, actually, I'm going back to uh, smoothing out the brush strokes, loading a brush with just the um, galkid liquid medium and then stroking it across to blend the colors. You know, and it's, it's at this point that it has less to do with what the scene looked like or looks like now and more to do with sort of pulling a picture together in its own right. And um, so I do refer back to what, I'm, what I've seen, but um, it's really the picture has sort of taken on a, an identity of its own.